we're talking about what people do in the air on different types of jumps. So once you leave the ground, you can't change the path of your center of mass, right? But what you can do is move your body around your center of mass in order to complete the task at hand. A famous example of this is the Fosbury flop and high jump, where you put this wave through your body in order to get one section of your body over the bar at a time. If this is executed well, you can clear the bar with your center of mass actually passing underneath the bar. The simple rule is this. In order to get one part of your body as high as possible, you put the rest of your body as low as possible. All right. For example, let's say I jump and my arms are up over my head. In this position, let's just say that my center of mass is at the height of my belly button and the top of my head is uh, two and a half feet higher than that. So if I get my center of mass to seven feet on this jump, then the top of my head is going to get to nine and a half feet if I stay in this position. But if I bring my arms down, I'm moving mass down. So I'm repositioning my body so my center of mass is now located a few inches below my belly button. So then my center of mass is still going to get to seven feet on this jump, but now the top of my head is further from my center of mass, so it's going to get a few inches higher than that nine and a half feet. So this is why when dunkers do height checks on the rim, they extend both arms down as low as they can, and they also keep the legs extended all the way down. Okay, to get the head as high as possible, you put everything else as low as possible. Same concept when you're reaching for something. The legs stay extended down, the opposite hand reaches down. Okay, this also explains why it's so much harder to dunk with two hands than with one. Okay, you lose a couple inches because you can't elevate two shoulders as high as you can elevate one. Okay, that's just anatomy. But also you lose a couple inches because uh, by having both hands over your head instead of just one, your center of mass is higher, that means your reach is not as far from your center of mass, so your reach is not as high with two hands. Another example is jump mat testing. Oh boy, brace your egos. So the measurement is based on your time in the air. So instinctively, uh, when you jump, you want to try to keep your feet up off the ground, right? Now people know that just blatantly pulling your feet up is cheating, so they don't do that. But they actually just cheat in a different way, okay? They bend at the waist, and they reach their arms down, Okay, so even if your legs stay straight, you've still repositioned your body so that your center of mass is closer to your feet. Okay, so it's still cheating. So when your feet touch down, your center of mass is going to be lower than at takeoff. All right, so that adds extra air time to the jump, and that throws off the measurement. So all these examples are showing people right before they hit the mat. The way that most people do landings on a jump mat, the vertical measurement is at least two inches higher than reality. If you want an accurate measurement, you have to land in the same position as your takeoff. Box jumps. You need to get your feet up onto the box so everything else comes down. So your torso and your arms come down. Now you also need to get forward onto the box so your arms are going to be more forward instead of like all the way down. Some people have criticized box jumps saying that the center of mass is in the hips and the hips don't get as high in a box jump. Therefore people aren't jumping as high as possible and box jumps are more about hip mobility. This is false criticism. What's actually happening is when the legs come up, the center of mass is then going to be positioned well above the hips. So no, maybe the hips don't go as high, but the center of mass still does. All right, people are not jumping onto 60 plus inch boxes without jumping their highest. Single leg box jumps. It's actually easier to get one foot on top of the box because you can get that foot higher by extending the opposite leg down. Straight leg box jumps. Again, we see bending down of the torso and reaching down of the arms. The legs may be straight, but this is still pulling the feet up to get onto the box.